Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have 1 half minus x squared equals square root of 1 half minus x and we're going to be looking for all the x values, real and complex. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. For my first method, which you could also call brute force, I'm going to square both sides. and come up with this equation. When you square the radical, you're just going to get rid of the radical sign. Let's go ahead and expand this. And when we expand this, so to keep a long story short, you can do this, it's very easy. You're going to get a quadratic, did I say quadratic? It should be quartic. We should get a quartic equation like this one. x to the fourth minus x squared plus x minus one fourth equals zero. Let's multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the fractions. We get x 4x to the 4th minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. This may look like something familiar, but it's not. It's not x plus 1 to the 5th power minus x to the 5th power because the coefficients, remember, are 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So they're all 4s and, you know, 4s and negative 4s and negative 1. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, this is missing the um, cubic term, so there's no x cubed. So we could definitely use a quartic formula. This is a reduced quartic, but it's not going to be pleasant. So let's not do it. Let's do it differently. Since we don't have the cubic, which is good, uh, we can try to factor this. Obviously, we're assuming that there's going to be some, you know, we can find those factors, right, by setting up a question. But the... the non-existence of x cubed is a good thing. So, there are two possibilities here, as far as I can see. We're either going to write it as 2x squared plus ax plus 1 multiply by 2x squared minus ax and then minus 1, or it could kind of be the, the vice versa. Or we could try to factor it uh, using 4x squared and x squared. So it's going to look like this in the second case. We have 4x squared plus ax plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus bx minus 1. In the second case scenario, when you distribute, you want uh, the, the coefficient of x cubed to be 0. So the coefficient of x cubed is going to be 4b x cubed plus ax cubed. So it's going to be 4b plus a. And you want that to be 0 because you, you don't have any x cubed in our equation. But this implies that a is equal to negative 4b. So if you go ahead and plug that in here and try a factor, like try factors like that, you might end up with something. But guess what? That doesn't really give us anything. So we're going to go with the first one. And this implies that when you distribute the whole thing, you're going to get 4x to the fourth. Obviously, x cubed is going to cancel out, uh, so we don't have to worry about it. Minus 2x squared and then uh, distribute the ax uh, minus a squared, x squared, I'm just skipping those terms, minus ax, and then plus 2x squared minus ax minus 1. And this is supposed to equal our uh, quartic, which is 4x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1. And obviously, that is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and arrange the terms on the left-hand side. Notice that 2x squared cancels out leaving us with 4x to the 4th minus a squared x squared minus 2ax minus 1, and that is equal to 4x to the 4th minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1. And if you compare these two polynomials, they are equal for all values of x. So this means the coefficient of uh, x squared must be the same on both sides. But here we have a squared, and a squared should equal 4. This implies a equals 2 or a equals negative 2. The second condition gives us negative 2ax equals, well, I don't need to include the x there. Negative 2a, which is the coefficient of x on the left-hand side, must equal 4. And this implies a equals negative 2. Since uh, we got negative 2 in both cases, we have to think about the intersection because they both have to be true. That means a equals negative 2 from here. So that gives us the factors, basically. So let's go ahead and write it in the factored form. 
And so our expression, which was 4x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1, is supposed to equal 2x squared minus 2x plus 1, multiply by 2x squared plus 2x minus 1. Yeah, and if you go ahead and distribute the factors on the right-hand side, you're actually going to get the expression on the left-hand side. So you can verify that all the time and set it equal to 0. Now, it's easier because we were able to write our quartic as the product of two quadratics. Now, I know some folks are saying, like, what if it's not factorable like this? Then we can't do it. Uh, do you want to use the quartic formula? Sure, why not? You can definitely do that. But this was factorable uh, on purpose, of course. And now let's go ahead and write the roots. So I'm going to follow one of the uh, f uh, advices, feedback, and write uh, use subscripts. So the roots are going to be, there's going to be four roots coming from both of these quadratic equations. To keep a long story short, x1, comma 2, the first two roots are going to be uh, using the quadratic formula. Uh, I'm using the one on the left, by the way. 2 plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so that's going to be 4 minus 8. And that divided by 4. If you simplify this, square root of negative 4 is going to be 2i plus minus 2i. And then we're going to get 1 plus minus i over 2. That's going to be x1 and x2. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at x3 and x4. They're going to be coming from this equation right here, the second one. And they're going to be uh, negative 2 plus minus the square root of 4 plus 8, because that's what uh, differs. And that, that's divided by 4, and that's going to give us negative 1 plus minus root 3 over 2. The kind of, uh, I kind of smell trigonometry here, but let's not get into that. That could probably be the third method, but we're not going to get into that. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the first method, not to the end of the video yet. So these are going to be the roots. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. My second method is definitely different and it's shorter. So we have this equation, 1 half minus x squared equals squared. By the way, um, we got some um, solutions, but could they be, um, what is it called, extraneous because we squared both sides? Uh, they could well be, um, but uh, they work. Anyways, okay. So we have this equation. And instead of squaring both sides, let's go ahead and use substitution. I'm going to set these equal to y. And don't ask why. From here, I get the following. First of all, if you look at this, uh, by squaring both sides, you get 1 half minus x equals y squared. And then switch the x and y squared, 1 half minus y squared equals x. But this one already gave me uh, 1 half minus x squared equals y. So this kind of gives us a really nice system and sort of symmetrical, right? So we could go ahead and take advantage of that. And the way I want to do it is we can isolate 1 half in both equations and then set them equal to each other. So kind of like y squared plus x equals x squared plus y. Get rid of the 1 half, in other words. You could also subtract the equations. It is the same thing. Now, I want to put everything on the left-hand side. So I get y squared plus x minus x squared minus y equals 0. And then I want to put together y squared minus x squared and put a minus 1 and write this as y minus x. So I kind of negate uh, what's inside the parentheses. Now, y squared minus x squared is factorable by difference of two squares, y plus x times y minus x. Therefore, we get a common factor. And from here, we take out y minus x, and we get two factors. And these two factors give us the same quadratic equation. Let me show you real quick how. First one gives us y equals x. And remember, y is 1 half minus x squared. That equals x is going to give you 2x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And you know the solutions already. I'm going to write them at the end. The other equation gives us y plus x equals 1. And y is 1 half minus x squared plus x equals 1. And this is going to give us the other equation, which is 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And that is where the complex solutions uh, arise. And from here, the solution set basically becomes the same, which is... 1 plus minus i over 2 and negative 1 plus minus square root of 3 over 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.